on the subject of living that is existing surviving by faith living a bracket it means existing it also means surviving by faith by the way it is our month of faith for greater glory we shall be doing a lot of x-ray on how to move from faith to greater glory but tonight living which is existing surviving by faith Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 4 he said, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Romans 1.17 repeats it. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Galatians 3.11 and Hebrews 10.38, both of them repeat the same statement, the just shall live by faith. So faith. Well, our objective tonight is to understand how we live, exist, or survive by faith. Faith is a major tool for the preservation of the life and destiny of the just faith is a major tool for the preservation of the life and destiny of the just the just lives exists survives and are preserved by faith we live we exist we survive we are preserved by faith so without faith existence is in danger Without faith, survival is in jeopardy. Without faith, existence is in danger. Survival is in jeopardy. Life is a risk without faith. Life is a gamble without faith. Life is almost like a one chance endeavor without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 all the way to verse 35 what shall I say more for the time will fail me to tell you of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms through faith they wrought righteousness obtained promises they stopped the mouths of lions they quenched the violence of the fire they escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, which means deliverance was available, that they might obtain a better resurrection. What will they all have done without faith? You remember?
remember the story of the young man who testified I think two three Sundays ago on his way to the Kaduna Road or something he entered a ritualist vehicle anybody remember sir and they carried him to the bush and while they were in the process of trying to eliminate the others it was his turn and he couldn't walk and he told them he said there shall be no loss I am not wasteable and he said he began to and the man said there was fire he went and brought a bigger charm he didn't walk he went and brought a bigger charm he didn't walk and he said send this man away from here we can do nothing with him they sent him away he would have been dead like chicken without faith he said our type is we are not easily wasteable not everybody is vegetable that is wasteable I declare to somebody here the next time death is looking for you or anyone connected to you it will catch those who send that death you believe that shout the loudest amen take your seat as we approach the end of the world with an escalation of unbelievable wickedness sins creation we need our faith intact we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fasting to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love I'm pressing on the upward way new heights I'm gay Lean every day still praying us I onward bound Lord plant my feet on higher Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven heaven stable a higher place than I have found Lord plant my feet on higher it is faith that shifts you shift your ground that takes you from the normal ordinary level where where fear abound where where calamity abound and that is why he says the just shall live by his faith being a person of faith is not a luxury it's not a status it's a necessity it's a necessity that must that must be walked having said all that what will faith do what will faith do one faith brings God on the scene of our lives situation faith brings God onto the scene the scenario the scenery of our life situation anywhere you are found per time your faith brings God there faith gives invitation to instant divine manifestation invitation for instant divine visitation and manifestation it gives invitation in hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 he said without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him 
Faith gives invitation. Your faith makes God is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. Your faith makes him available. Am I communicating at all? Faith gives invitation for instant divine visitation. It brings God to the scene. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3 verse 16. They told Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known unto thee that we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image which thou has set up. Our God whom we serve will deliver us is able to deliver us and he will he is able to deliver us and he will that was where the faith lied he is able when god heard that he moved verse 23 he moved he said if faith is there i am there if faith is there i am there verse 23 and these three men shadrach meshach and abednego fell down bound into the midst of the fire burning fiery furnace then nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they answered and said unto the king true O king he answered I say, and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart, and the form of the fort is like the Son of God. Our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us, and he will. When God heard that, he said, I am there. If faith is there, I am there. Is God speaking to somebody here? If faith is there, I am there. If you want to find God anywhere, put faith there. If faith is there, God is there. If faith is in your life, God is in your life. If faith is in your business, God is in your business. If faith is in your ministry, God is in your ministry. If you are saying amen, shout it like a believer. Let me show you something. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9. Jesus said unto him, speaking to that man with that child, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. What is the meaning of if thou can believe? If you have faith, all things are are possible so somebody say with faith say it louder say with faith all things are possible say it louder say with faith all things are possible you say if thou can believe all things are possible to him that believe it meaning with faith all things are possible now look at the second one Mark chapter 10 verse 27 <laughs> so, so you see a revelational equation and Jesus looking upon them said with men it is impossible but not with God. For with God. The other one we saw that with faith. All things are possible. Now we are seeing that with God. What equation are we dealing with now? With faith all things are possible. With God all things are possible. So the move of faith is the move of God. <laughs> With faith, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. I mean, A equals B, B equals C. It means that A is directly equal C. With faith, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Which means the move of faith is the move of God. Anywhere faith is at work, God is at work. Is somebody here today? I prophesy in the life of someone tonight, you shall see the work of God. 
anywhere you want to see God release faith. Ay, 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 ay. God at work equals faith at work. Faith at work equals God at work. I announce to someone here today, after tonight, people will see your God at work because they will see your faith at work. Shout the loudest. Amen. You know, if we stop here, it's enough. All right, let's go to point number two. What does faith do? Faith brings God on the scene of our life situation. Number two, faith establishes a spiritual shield of defense around the saint. A spiritual shield of defense. So, at, at first, why you cannot be destroyed and you cannot be wasted is because if your faith is at work, God is at work. And God can't walk and watch you wasted. God cannot walk and watch you wasted. That's the first reason why your faith preserves you. God, your faith at work means your God at work. And God can't watch you wasted. Secondly, faith establishes a spiritual shield of defense around the saint. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 16, Ephesians 6, 16, he said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the shield of faith. Psalm 125, verse 1 to 2. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. These same people that trust the Lord as mountains are round about Jerusalem. So the Lord is round about his people, those who trust him from henceforth, even forevermore. So when you are in faith, you are shielded. You are under an anti-ballistic shelter, a missile shelter a missile shield when arrows are flying from the altars in your father's house and flying from the witchcraft covers and flying arrows of bitterness and envy and those who want you dead on the spot by the time they near where you are coming they backfire to sender somebody shout backfire to sender How many of you know that arrows are real? Oh yeah, young man is walking like this, walking like this, walking like this. Somebody I know very well, many years ago, maybe 20 years ago, was in the immigration then, walking on the road like this, all of a sudden, bam! Slumped, straight to the ground. Didn't wake up. Arrows are real. And many times we, talk, we only think... We thought that arrows only affect bodies but there are people big business all of a sudden one arrow bam start again beautiful enviable marriage I was talking to a woman in a healing and deliverance service oh, a morning view one day and I was prophetically talking to her and I said the devil is trying to bring a challenge between you and your husband and because they say you have been favored too much. You see, that is what they said. That they said the man loved his wife too much. So some people did some things and the man and his wife became like this. Beautiful marriage. All of a sudden, one strange arrow. Man became cat and dog. That devil is a bastard. So there are arrows everywhere. But it is your faith that makes the arrows to arrive and return back to senders. One day I was in a house and I felt an arrow flew around my, me like this in the, in the living room. And I stood on the, on the same spot, retrieved that arrow back to sender. And as I began to declare, my wife ran from the room. Everyone, daddy, daddy, what is happening? I say, I'm fighting. 
<laughs> I'm fighting. I just felt an arrow and I, I have to return it. One blow, seven die. You are looking for me, but thousands of you will die. Hey! Somebody shout power! Lift your right and say in the name of Jesus. Every arrow from hell looking for my life. Backfire! Back to sender. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That is why your faith must be sharp. So that your life is not wasted. Your business is not grounded. Your career is not arrested. Your mind is not perverted. There are all manner of arrows. But it will never arrest you. It will never arrest you. A young man told me he went to walk in a, a place like the hotel or something something walking good work not a bad and then a young man came to him and said he has problem with homosexuality and he prayed for the young man to be delivered two months later homosexual devil came on the man who prayed for the other one and suddenly he doesn't like women anymore that is his wife. Doesn't like his wife anymore. It is man that he's looking for. He wants to see man. He wants to kiss man. The devil is a bastard. To waste his life. Those are, those are reprisal arrows. That is who are you to set that man free? Reprisal arrows. But your faith must be in place so that the arrows does not pull you down. Every arrow fired from the pit of hell looking for you. The arrow is returned back to hell. Take your seat, but your faith must be alive. Number three, faith. So the reason why your faith preserves you is that God is around you. God is around in your life. And when God is working, you can't be wasted. Secondly, your faith establishes a shield around you so that when arrows come, they return back to sender. Thirdly, faith taps into the... Okay, let me say it like this. Faith connects the believer to the very life of God. And you know that the life of God is indestructible faith connects the believer to the life of god or qualified to the indestructible okay that's right to the very life of god and the life of god is indestructible how do i mean romans chapter 11 verse 23 paul the apostle talking about the gentiles that were grafted he said and they also if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. How many of you know of grafting? There is king grafting, there is in agriculture. They shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in. That's talking about the Jews, grafting. That is, he said, if they abide not in unbelief, that is if they believe, that is if they have faith, they can be connected to the life of God. Paul put it clearer in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. He said, I am crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But the life which I now live in the flesh. No, no. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh is I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me my life is not the one that is there anymore it is the life of christ and i tapped into it by faith am i communicating i tapped into that life your faith is like an electric cable 
electric cable that connects you to divine transformer. You didn't hear what I said. Your faith is like an electricity cable connecting you to divinity transformer. That whatever cannot waste God cannot waste you. Whatever cannot oppress God cannot oppress you. Whatever cannot bury God cannot bury you. Somebody shout power. Am I speaking to the right audience here tonight? So that when you are walking, when you are moving, there is something inside you. A weariless, tireless life. Sickless. Oppressless. Defeatless. Limitless. <laughs> Failless. Hello. Every time you got a new insight in God's word. Every time your faith comes alive. You are tapping afresh into the very life of God and if God has favor it comes on you if God has energy it comes on you if God has a health the health comes on you that is why your faith comes alive have you ever seen when Jesus was on the earth he prayed against witches and wizards you saw it he woke up in the morning and said Kai Peter the dream I dreamed last night eh? In fact, I have not seen that kind of dream. Something was pressing me down. I was shouting, God, God. <laughs> I like you to imagine it. Imagine it. Some ritualists were pursuing him. He was running. Imagine it. You tap into the very life of God by faith. And what you know determines what you show. As this insight is coming upon you, the very life that I speak about is coming upon you. Say a louder amen. amen. Say the loud most amen. amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. That was number three. Number four. So first of all, your faith brings God on the scene and God is there so he can't watch you wasted. Then your faith establishes a shield around you. Then the arrows of destruction cannot waste you. Then your faith connects you to the very life of God and that life is indestructible. Then number four, faith guarantees triumph in the conflicts and battles of life faith guarantees triumph in the conflicts and battles of life first john chapter 5 verse 4 whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith why do we need to overcome? For we wrestle. For we wrestle. Look at the neighbor. Say we wrestle. Say you must. You may not be interested. But we wrestle. We wrestle. The only thing is that it's not against flesh and blood. But it's against witches and wizards and lizards and bitches. And <laughs> we wrestle. We wrestle. You didn't need to look for anybody's trouble. That you are well dressed, annoy somebody. That you are not coming to beg for money is an offense. <laughs> Am I communicating? If they could be seeing you on the road and say, take, and you say, thank you, sir. I'm grateful. Then no offense. The rest of and in this conflict of life, it is faith that is needed to win the battle. Why? Because faith imparts supernatural strength. 
Faith makes you extra strong in the spirit. In Romans chapter 4 and in verse 20, concerning Abraham, the Bible said he was strong in faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. The difference between a weak Christian and a strong Christian is the faith element. Strong in faith. Strong in faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. The Bible says, By true faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. Receives strength to conceive. So faith gives you supernatural strength to deal with what you don't have dealt with in your physical. Hebrews 11, 34. The Bible said, They quench the violence of the fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, we are made strong by the same faith. By the same faith. And they wax valiant in fight by the same faith. And they turn to flight. Ay, 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 ay. The next, the last time they were pursuing and you were running shall be the last forever. How many of you know the weapons of our warfare? Helmet of salvation. Breastplate of what? Righteousness. Shield of what? Feet shod with what? Preparation of the gospel of peace. Sword of what? Which is what? The word of God. So you have your chest covered. You have your head covered. You have your leg covered. And you have a shield. Now what is for the back? What did the Bible say we are to use to cover the back? Nothing. Why? You are not permitted to turn your back. God never calculated for you to turn your back. It is not in the equation. It's not in the equation for you to turn your back on the devil, on witches and wizards, on the power of darkness. That was why I said the last time you turn your back shall be the last forever. Somebody shout the loudest. Amen. Tell somebody around you, tell them you shall never turn your back for the devil. Another day of your life shall the loudest. Amen. Take your seat. You need strength. You are not permitted to be a jellyfish Christian. Faith makes you to makes your reaction time to be rapid. It makes you to be highly impatient with the devil. Your reaction time is very rapid. There are people who, who react so slowly. They, they threaten you. You went and thought about it before you returned. Is it me you are threatening? No. You reacted before you had the time to think. It is wired in your body. It just, it has autom automatic rhythmicity. Somebody sent me a test to say, good morning, sir. Morning, M-O-U-R-N, like mon. So I fired it back. I said that morning is for the devil, his agents, and wherever he came from. He said, I am sorry, sir. Spelling mistake. Don't make such a spelling mistake near me. Very, very short reaction time. You don't take things for granted. You don't say it's a mistake. Don't assume it's a mistake. Let the person use his mouth to say it's a mistake. Yes. Yes. 
I prophesy to someone here, you will never mourn forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And every time your destiny is being decided, never keep quiet. Under no occasion. Whether it is being decided or affected or impacted or distracted. You don't keep quiet. Take your seat. Why on the mountain today? Faith. The guarantee of triumph. Because it gives you supernatural strength. You are not a weakling. You react. In fact, you are not even just reactionary, you are proactive. You, 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 you do anticipatory attacks. <laughs> there are situations where the best form of defense is attack. Finally, number five. Faith connects the glory of God. And the glory of God is a defense. It connects the glory of God. John chapter 11, verse 40. If Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou would believe, or if you have faith, you should see the glory of God. The glory of God travels in the direction of faith. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8. You say yet, see, whom have you not seen, you love. In whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable Believing with joy unspeakable and them full of glory. Believers are qualified for glory. Am I communicating? Faith connects the glory of God and the glory of God is a defender. How do I mean? Isaiah chapter 4 verse 5. You see upon all. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be. The faith realm is the glory realm and the glory realm is the safety realm. Again, the faith realm is the glory realm and the glory realm is the safety realm the glory realm is the defense realm upon all the glory shall be a defense you remember when they surrounded Moses and wanted to stone him Numbers chapter 16 verse 42 after they turned Koran and Abiram the Bible said it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation and behold the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared the glory appeared you want to stone Moses you want to stone Aaron I appear I appear and it didn't appear for nothing you know, some people were buried do you know the number 46 look at verse 46 it will tell you all the way to verse 49 and Moses said unto Aaron, take a sense and put fire therein from all the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in that plague were 14,700. Beside them that died about the matter of Korah. They wanted, they gathered against Moses. And the glory arrived. Glory arrived. God said, give me a chance, Moses. Give me a chance. He stood between, between, him, between Moses and the people. Okay, touch him now. Let me see. You people, touch him now. <laughs> By the time he said, 
take your time. Don't try it next time. 14,000 has died. He has... <laughs> 14,000, 14,700, they have died. Don't try this next time, okay? <laughs> the Bible didn't say he sent an angel to slap them. Nothing happened. He just appeared. And then, next time, be careful. <laughs> Upon all the glory shall be a defense the glory realm the faith realm is the glory realm and the glory realm is the safety realm is the defense realm that is why the devil tried to shake your faith where is God why would God do this to me why is there God he tries to shake your faith in order to, to tamper with your safety but tonight it is over everyone whose faith is shaking I prophesy revival for you tonight can you say amen like a believer very very quickly because of time what is the way of faith that is what we shall be dealing with throughout the whole of the month and every single service in this month is very critical the Sunday service, the midweek services, the home church. But well, let's start like this. What is faith? Now, one, faith begins where the mind or will of God, mind in bracket means will, where the mind of God is known. What is the mind of God for my life? What is the will of God for my... For example, faith... For divine preservation begins when you know that he suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. When you know that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Faith for divine health begins when you know. That the mind of God is, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospered, you know it. That's the beginning. Himself took your infirmities, carried your diseases. That is where the faith begins. To know. Faith begins where the mind of God is known. So anybody who doesn't know the word of God at all has not started yet. Because Romans 10, 17 said, faith Comet by hearing by the word of God. So faith begins where the mind of God is known. You must be an addicted student of the Bible. Reading, listening, hearing. Second, faith continues when the mind of God is understood. It's one thing to know and it's another thing to understand. Faith continues when the mind of God is understood. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. That first hearing is knowing. The second hearing is understanding. That is hearing, knowing faith comes by knowing and understanding. The word of God. Knowing and understanding. Acts chapter 8 verse 29 to verse 30. The centurion. The Ethiopian eunuch was riding. The Spirit of God said to Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. And Philip ran and, and, and he, he heard him reading Isaiah. And he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? The understanding is where the faith lies. When we say this person's faith is stronger than this person, it means that this person's understanding on the particular issue is deeper, deeper. Is deeper than the other. Am I communicating? For example, faith for supernatural supplies. All of us know the Bible that uh, God supplies the needs of His people according to His riches in glory. 
But there are depths of understanding. Am I communicating at all? How many of you know that primary one mathematics is different from JS1? JS1 is different from SS2. And it's different from extra mass. And what we call further mass in SS3 is kindergarten to BSc 200 level mathematics. Mathematical methods, statistics, eh? differential equations, permutations, integrations, binomial theorems. Hello? And then you move there to MSc mathematics where you begin to deal with higher levels of Stokes equations. <laughs> and then you get, went to PhD mathematics. When the mass you learned in 100 level, you are going to apply it on the movement of fluid. How water moves. Ay, 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 ay. All of them studied mass. But will you put them in the same class? In secondary school, they taught me that uh, my stomach and my esophagus and my, um, and my small intestine, the ileum, the jejunum, and, and then the colon and the rectum, they taught me it is alimentary canal. When I went to medical school in first, second year physiology, they told me it is called gastrointestinal tract. <laughs> and I was celebrating it in biology. Alimentary canal. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here today? That is how life is. I want you, whatever you think you know, ask God to deepen your understanding. Anything. The, the level of result you have seen in any of those realms is a product of your level of understanding of the subject. Faith. I'm sorry if I didn't use your own um, your own realm. I'm talking about the things that I have come across. Faith begins where the mind of God is known. Faith continues where the mind of God is understood. Thirdly, faith is established when the mind of God is believed. You believe it. I have known that the Bible said so. I have understood that this is what the Bible means. And then, I believe. Believe the Lord of God. So shall you be established. Second, First Chronicles 20.20 20. Faith is established when the mind of God is believed. Luke chapter 1 verse 45 Blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance. It's established when you are unmovable unshakable in what you know God says what God wants for your life what God has designed for your life. And of course Psalm 27 verse 13 he said I had fainted Unless I had believed to see the goodness of God. So it is people who believe that see. I believed to what? To see. I believed to what? Who are you to see what, what you have not believed? I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So faith begins where the mind of God is known. So, be acquainted with scripture. And second, it continues as the mind of God is understood. So, keep on deepening your understanding of scripture. And then, faith is established when the mind of God is believed. Finally, faith is perfected when the mind of God is obeyed and believed sorry and behaved obeyed and behaved 
you knew it, you understood it, you believe it, then you began to behave it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe, to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you. You, you begin to obey God. Anything that they, any demand the word of God places on you, you obey it. If you say fear not, you refuse to fear. All right, am I communicating? You shall serve the Lord and He shall bless your bread. And I'm trusting God for the blessing. Then I, I dip myself in the service, and then I begin to behave it. I, I refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to feel low. I refuse to feel down. For any devil, that is when you begin to see the results of faith, beloved. Tonight. Your faith will produce results.